with random lighting as about ran, as about as random lighting as can be but with a message that is so powerful I really want you to catch it in Colossians chapter 2 now We'd gone through all of Colossians chapter 1, and a great deal of revelation was found, especially in that word dispensation. But there was a thing that I really wanted to touch on, and I forgot about time and not having the ability to stream because uh, I had planned streaming and driving at the same time. Not, not a smart idea. Anyways, in the middle of riding and my trusty co-pilot driving, there is a specific message that I wanted to bring. Now, I don't have the word of God in front of me. You'll have to go look it up. But I was, I was, um, wanting to talk about this thing called ordinance now ordinance ordinance is very very specific uh it's very um it reminded me of when i was in high school in the civil war class and in the Civil War class, I learned about ordinance. It wasn't called ordinance if it wasn't a howitzer or bigger. Now let's talk about howitzer. A howitzer is a mounted gun that can shoot a weighted ball. This weighted ball can either be a a um, a little bit larger than a musket ball. If it hits you, it's going to go through you and several others. That's a howitzer, small size. A regular, a bigger howitzer. If it hits you, it's going to also take out the house behind you. There's a story about a about a uh, Civil War rein, uh, reenactment where a cannon was rolling by and a man put his leg out to stop it and it took his leg off. That's the level of ammunition. Hmm? Sorry, but I'm going to try to find the Chick-fil-A again. Okay. That's the level of ammunition that it's talking about when you look at the word ordinance and the word ordinance in the new testament when it says that the blood of jesus blotted out all the ordinances of handwriting against us it's not talking about a little pelt gun it's not talking about a little tiny thing. It's talking about great, big, gigantic cannon fodder or a cannon ammunition that is being held. Now, a little thing about this cannon fodder. You and I, we are all cannon fodder if we play by the rules that the kingdom of darkness sets up. We are either used as cannon fodder against other Christians or we are used as 
cannon fodder against unbelievers. Always. We are either against other Christians or we are used against unbelievers. Why? Because the enemy really likes to hang on to agreements. He really likes to hang on to blood covenants. He really likes to hang on to blood contracts. He's all about hanging on to those. Why? Well, mostly because <laughs> that's where he gets his cannon fodder from. Everything that we have done or everything that our bloodline has done, all of that is ammunition. And a very favorite teacher, Natasha Gerbich, described this, what's happening, whenever you see levels of arguments between yourself and any other person, your words are being balled up and used as stuffing behind a cannon. And so the cannon fodder Fodder, by the way, is spelled F O D D E R. Huh? F O D D E R. It's the stuffing that goes into a cannon to make sure that when the cannonball exits the muzzle, the cannonball flies straight. So if you and I our cannon father you and i be being stuffed down into a cannon and our blood covenants contracts and agreements are the cannon ball and our words being set as cannon father All of a sudden, it becomes very, very necessary to find out how to do one of two things. Number one, find out how to no longer be cannon fodder. And number two, find out what the blood actually did. Now, what the blood actually did. We're going to address number two before we get to number one because of number one being number one importance. Number two, what did the can what did the blood blot out? The blood blotted out that everything that we do on the earth, whether we are mimicking Jesus or not, can be used against us because we are not Jesus. Norm, wouldn't that kind of eliminate being a Christian? Yes, it would. Especially because you're not Jesus. You see, we tend to look at the name Jesus Christ and we tend to see it as our Savior. But the demonic realm doesn't. The demonic realm sees it as a club to bludgeon any other ungodly, or excuse me, to bludgeon any being that isn't Jesus Christ to death. Why is that so specific? Because according to the spiritual law of identity,
if I am not an exact representation of Jesus Christ, then I am an exact representation of cannon fodder. If I am not an exact representation of Jesus Christ, then I am an exact representation of cannon fodder. It will not be one or the, it will not be one alongside the other. It is one or the other. It is never both. So because that one way of doing is the easiest way to confuse the Christian. That is precisely what the devil does. That is precisely what all the demonic do. They do everything they can to get you confused. You want water or something else? Oh, uh, well, let me see what. Hi, how are you? Hello. Can you give me one second? Yeah. Can I look at the menu? Of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, root Large? Yes. Or, can I have one large root beer? All right, large root beer. Okay, and. Okay. Can I have a cob salad? All right. What kind of dressing would you like first? Mm. Garden her herb ranch. Gotcha. Okay. And um, can I have a? Uh, sorry. Sorry. Let me. I'm sorry. Let me just think about it. Okay. Okay, the chicken tenders. All right, do you want just the tenders or the meat? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to do this to you. You're good. Can I take off the salad? Of course. And get a number seven? Okay, what kind of cheese would you like? We have Colby Jack, American, and Pepper Jack, and no cheese if you don't want cheese. Pepper Jack. All right. And can I please have the uh, water? Okay. And I think that'll be it. All right. That comes with fries, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Do you want any sauces? Oh, no, thank you. All right, I have a large root beer and then the grilled cup with pepper jack fries and a water. All right, can I have a name for your order? Oh, tea. All right. All right. All right, this is going to be fourteen twenty-five. Okay. I already have a good night. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. I need the backlight of that menu to be <laughs> my... To <laughs> your phone, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the... I just want to make sure... Kingdom of Darkness... No, you. you too. ...is very keen on using ignorance... As a fuse for the cannon. So we've already described what is the cannon ball. The cannon ball is Blood Covenant's contracts agreements. Cannon fodder is words. So any words that are not an exact representation of Jesus Christ by the spiritual law of identity, if it is not exactly 
representation of Jesus Christ. It is ammunition against a Christian or unbeliever. Always. Bear with me one moment here. All right. According to the rule of spiritual identity, if you are not the exact representation of Jesus Christ, you are ammunition. In order to not be ammunition, your ammunition has to be blotted out. Now that's what Jesus did on the cross for those who are in Christ. There's a very specific definition of what you got to be to be in Christ. Let me show you. With a handy dandy Bible. When I saw that you were you had brought your Bible, I got all excited. Now I gotta find it. That's my bag. Oh, okay. Thank you. Gotta work. Chronological, uh, chronological Bible day. Yep, so found out. All right. Scrolling. 
No, it's not Revelation. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Ah, further back, I think. Getting there. Not used to this Bible. There is a um way that you can look for the order of the Bible in there. I'm just looking for where do you look? Keep going. I got it. No. No. Behind that. Got it. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm looking for Colossians, which is 1584. Page number. Oh, there it is. Closer to the spine. 1519. 15. 55. 78. 83. Colossians two. All right, flipping my screen here. Actually, second page here. Verse 11. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and you were, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God whom raised, who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature it was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins." He canceled, here it is, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away, nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Did you catch that? You have to be dead to you, to who you are entirely. The only part that is allowed to live, let's put that there for now. The only part that's allowed to live is the part that is the identity of Jesus in you. At any point that you allow any other identity other than what is Jesus to be living, you are cannon fodder. Your life in the actions you have, the words you speak, the uh, memories you keep, the way that you remember other people, and the way that you're being influenced, all of that is the cannon fodder for your words. Why the words? Because the kingdom of darkness takes it very seriously that the Bible says that faith comes by the hearing of the word. 
Because there's another thing that comes from the hearing of the word. You know what comes from the hearing of the word? Accusations. So if your very word does not match up to what Jesus did. Sorry. That went live. (laughs) (laughs) If it doesn't match what Jesus did, then your words become ammunition against other people. John, the beloved, came up to Jesus and said, Hey, we saw someone who was casting out devils and preaching in your name. Should we call down fire because they're not in our group? And Jesus says, you don't even know what you're saying. Whoever is not for me is against me. Whoever is not... No, you messed that up. Whoever's not against me. Whoever is not against me is for me. So if they're not actively against you, then they are for you. However, cannon fodder And as often as we have been shot with cannon fodder means that we hear everything as a threat. We hear everything as though it's actively against us. We hear everything as though we are being accused of being a fake. So then... I say what Salt said, not his real name, but we call him Salt. We even call him Salty. Salty said, if it didn't come from the identity of Jesus, it will not sting unless you are in evil doings, evil evil actions. And if you are not in evil actions, and it is in the word of God, and it does come from the words of Jesus, it will build you up. In the same way, if you are in the identity of Jesus, and someone speaks a canon at you, then it don't matter. Because they're firing at something that's dead. You can't kill what's dead already. You can't hurt what's dead already. If you are being affected in a negative way by what someone else is saying, it's because of one of two reasons. Either you are not in the in the identity of Jesus or you are cannon fodder. And you became cannon fodder because you identified with a deity other than Jesus Christ. That's it. Jesus circumcised every person. They get that circumcision by being baptized that when they are going down they're dying to all their old ways of doing life and coming alive in Jesus only if you're coming alive in something other than Jesus you are the reason why burps are coming just kidding you are the reason why I'm pointing I'm pointing you The listener, if you're getting hurt by what other people are saying, you are the reason. Because Jesus died to kill it. And you're holding on to it. So many people try to say a thing to me. 
meaning it as being offensive. Cool. I'm sorry that you believe that you have to shoot that, but that part of me is dead. Norm, you know that all of us are sinners. No, I don't know that. I don't receive that. Norm, you know that every person sins until the day they die. No, I don't know that. I don't receive that. Neither did Jesus. So you have to take the exact same thing that you're saying to me and apply it to Jesus. If it works for Jesus, it'll work for me. Was he a sinner to the day, till the day he died? No. He was perfection. But he took on the sin and the sin killed him. So one way or the other, you can't, either it's the sin will kill you or you are a sinner till the day you die, but it's not both. Because the moment that Jesus took on the sin, God turned his face away. But Jesus stayed on the cross until every, every ordinance was paid for. So, why do people still act in a way that their very life becomes cannon fodder. Very easy answer. You ready? They did not die. Mm. You cannot say that you're a Christian and allow your way of thinking to stay. You can't. This is why Jesus, at the very end, all these individuals say, didn't we do all these things in your name? And he'll say, I don't even know who you are. You prefer to walk in levels of iniquity, and I don't know what that is. I don't participate in iniquity. I don't engage in iniquity. I am not a worker of iniquity, but you are. I don't even know who you are. So, if Jesus is to blot out the iniquity against you, and for that blotting to stay and become a threat against the kingdom of darkness. In order for the threat to stay against the kingdom of darkness, you in your trespasses or the sole way of thinking, kill it, lay it down. All ways of all the different ways of how you need to be right in a conversation, take it down. There's only one that needs to be right in a conversation, and that is Jesus. With that, at just a little over 33 minutes and two burps, thank you for being here. I'll see you on Monday. <laughs>